I went on a journey of having a baby. And I remember when I got the call from the doctor saying I had an advanced ovarian reserve at 36 years old. Oh, I was crying. And we did try everything. And we had a beautiful son, Zachary. We lost a 20 weeks gestation. And I may never recover from that shock and that loss of the little boy who just cracked my heart open in a way that I didn't know it could be cracked. After all of the painful years, I really was opening. And I loved how my relationship was when I was pregnant. And when we, I felt that we were on board together in another way. And of course, there's layers to that as well. But I was broken after his loss, like really broken. And I approached ayahuasca with the intention to have a baby. And I drank the, the brew and I saw tie-dye and candy. And I was like, this is ayahuasca? At the time, I was like, this is just one more disappointment. Like, really? I threw up. I left feeling great, but apparently having received nothing, that was my impression. And then the next day, the most amazing thing happened. My sexuality woke up. Like, in an instant. And I was able to see how much I had taken on in trying to have a baby, trying to juice up those ovaries, trying to be healthy. Trying to be good enough, trying, trying to earn the baby. And my desire just lit me up. And it felt so good. I felt alive. And I very quickly went on a five day radical aliveness retreat. And my whole world began to change. And it was not easy. It had huge consequences in my relationship. I ended up losing that relationship. And I grieve to this day. And yet again, I wouldn't look back. I would not look back. And over ceremony after ceremony after ceremony, I completed almost 30 ayahuasca ceremonies in two years, combined with intense somatic therapy and lots of action taking in my life and lots of growth and a whole exploration of my sexuality that went really deep, wild journey. And then adding on a whole bunch of spiritual energetic practices from various lineages that were really strong, exploring um, some practices around BDSM in a sacred way, looking at the relationship between pain and pleasure at a very, very, very deep way. And also um, working with Bufo Alvarius, the toad, I really broke through. And things started to change in a massive way, massive way, where I could be free and wildly creative, which I haven't been lately in the world. I've been creating my work. But there's so much I want to do around fashion, around film, around dance. Uh, I feel free. I feel free. And earlier this year, <laughs> I was being interviewed on a podcast by Raya Gonzalez. And she gave me a real gift. She was asking me about my struggle to have children. And she said, oh my gosh, you are a badass, she said. So the universe says you can't have a baby. And you say, F you, universe, I'll show you mothering. And here you are mothering change on this planet. You see, if you told me a few years Earlier, let's say four or five years earlier. Oh, you're going to be mothering change on the planet. It's going to be so much better than your baby. I might have pounded you. Seriously. It's not the type of thing to say. To try to prematurely make lemonade out of lemons or whatever you want to say. Find the lesson. You can't be premature about it. It also doesn't wipe out the grief. It absolutely doesn't wipe out the grief of all the things I will never experience. And the losses, the many losses. But it is absolutely true that I feel in alignment with my mothering energy in a very big way. And I am pumped up by what I see. When I see my clients open, release long-held pain, when I am able to hold them, when 
when they find their sexuality, when, when they make all the right choices for them, which are different for everybody, when I see them in their own energy and empowered, I am so lit up and I am so grateful for this career. Is this a career <laughs> for this life that I'm carrying these medicines and representing them in, in my own limited way um, in the world? So I am incredibly grateful. And I see life as holding more. So it's not about going from sad to happy. That's not the journey of life. It's a piece of the journey of life or stress to a piece. That's a piece of it. The peace, the happiness is from rooting deeper and allowing it all, of understanding that grief is part of life. And part of grief is what we've been taught about what's good, which is love, youth, beauty, money, and success, and nice homes. So, so part of grief is this kind of working through of what we're taught. And part of it is that sadness and fear and all the things are part of life. And can we let them flow? And can we root and see the joy and then have the tears? And it all is in this beautiful dance of pleasure, which is aliveness, which is creation, which is life. And that is ultimately the path that I am on, that I am committed to. And my work right now is opening my heart more and more and understanding what that really means in human form, because that's where it gets a little messy, right? Because <laughs> we need, do need our boundaries. But then there's love. And how do those things interplay and interact. So I really appreciate the people in my world who listen to the work that I create and to witness me. And I hope that this episode has offered you something of value. And in particular in this episode, I would love to hear from you whatever questions and thoughts you might have to prompt me in future work in telling my story. If this episode of Aliveness resonated with you, be sure to subscribe so you get all the juicy episodes to come. And if you have a friend who is deep into their personal growth and healing journey, share this podcast with them too. Now go out and experience the aliveness that's here for you today.